Hello, welcome to the Wednesday Club this week online. Now, listen to what the government has been saying. It looks like we're going to have to carry on doing Wednesday Club online like this, or me sending the crafts around and collecting them from Valley Cleaners till Easter, which is only in another five weeks. Then after Easter, hopefully, the way it looks at the moment, we'll be able to do Wednesday Club back in the church again, which is great because we'll be able to do more things, and different crafts and play games and things like that again, won't we? So this half term, we'll carry on doing them online like we're doing. And the next half term, after Easter, hopefully, we're we'll back in the church, which would be great, won't it? It'll give us a lot more room in that. Start though, we're going to carry on looking this week at the rest of the story of Jonah, which we started out last week. And last week, remember, we had this text, didn't we? Where can I run from your presence? It was a question, wasn't it? And it was a question about where can you and I go to hide or run away from God? And the answer is nowhere. There's nowhere you and I can go where we can run away or hide from God. And as we looked at the story of Jonah last week, we saw Jonah was a man that loved God. But when God told him to do something he didn't want to do, Jonah didn't want to obey God. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to warn them about how bad they were and about their sin and how God was going to judge their city. Why? Because Nineveh was where Israel's enemies lived. And because they were his enemies, Jonah didn't want them forgiven. He didn't want God forgiven them. He didn't want them to know that God loved them. No, he wanted them to be destroyed. He wanted God to love him because he was Jonah and because he was an Israelite. But he didn't want God to love his enemies, the Assyrians, that lived in Nineveh. He wanted God to destroy them. So instead of going there and warning them about their sin, the wrong things, and how they need to say sorry to God, Jonah packed his bags and ran the other way, didn't he? Ran all the way to the coast and got on a boat to go to Spain. And he thought he could run away and he thought he could hide from God's presence. But you can't do that, can you? Because a lot of memory texts we have was that, oh Lord, you've searched me and you know me. And wherever we go, no matter what we try to hide, God sees and God knows everything. There's nowhere we can go where we can run away or hide from God. And you know what happens, and I know what happens. Because God sent that storm, didn't he? And the, the boat began to go like this all over the place. And Jonah and all the other sailors were scared they're going to drown. And the sailors were so scared. But when they found out that Jonah had run away from God, and that Jonah couldn't pray to God to deliver him from the storm, in the end, they had to throw Jonah over the side of the boat. And then the storm stopped, and Jonah lands in the sea. And miles from the sea to the shore, there's no way Jonah could swim. We don't even know if Jonah could swim. The Bible doesn't tell us. But Jonah would have drowned. But God knew. God saw him. And even though Jonah didn't deserve it, God still loved him. And God sent a big fish that swallowed Jonah whole and saved Jonah from drowning. And Jonah's now right down in the bottom of the ocean. And the fish's tummy. Seaweed wrapped all around his head, looking a right mess. And it's there that Jonah realises that you can't run away from God. You can't hide from God. And wherever you go, God's love is bigger and greater. God loves everyone, whether we deserve it or not. And there, at the bottom of the ocean, the fish's tummy, with a seaweed wrapped all around his head, Jonah began to pray. He knew God saw him. He knew God that still loved him. And he knew God had saved him and drowned him. And he prayed to God. And he acknowledged it was God that was in control, not him. Is God going to hear Jonah's prayer right down there in the bottom of the ocean? Of course he is. God answers his prayer. And God tells a fish to swim to the shore and spit Jonah out on the beach. Well, what happened next? The next part of the story. We've got a new verse in the Bible I want to look at for a few minutes. Now we have done this verse before at Wednesday Club. It says this, love the Lord your God with all your heart as everything you've got more than anything else. And love your neighbour as yourself. Now in the Bible your neighbour can be any other person, not just a person that lives in the house next door to you. So it's love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbour as yourself. Luke 10, verse 27. So the Bible's teaching us that we should love God about everything else of our heart and we should love others the same way as we love ourselves. It's very hard to do, isn't it? It's very easy to be selfish and love ourselves more than other people. 
It's very easy to be selfish and not love God more than anything else, isn't it? And Jonah is struggling with doing this. And that's what today's story is all about. But you see, again, God told Jonah a second time to go to Nineveh and to warn them because of their sin. Warn them because of the wrong, evil, wicked thing they were doing that God was going to judge and destroy their city. And this time, Jonah doesn't run away. Jonah goes. He travels to Nineveh, all the way to Nineveh, which was a massive big city. And there Jonah begins to tell people. He stands on the corner of the street and has to shout out and tell them about their sin. Tell them that God sees and knows and searches everything and has nowhere they can go hide their sin from God. And in 40 days, their city is going to be destroyed by God unless they said sorry. And I think Jonah thought Nineveh is so evil, it's so bad, they're never going to listen to me. They're never going to say sorry. They're never going to trust God. And so they're going to get destroyed. So when he fishing, going all around the city and telling people God's message, he went outside the city and he sat down outside the city and he waited. And he had to count the days. One, two, three, four. And he thought, it's a bit like an advent calendar at Christmas. When I get to day 40, that's it. I'm going to be able to see Nineveh destroyed. And they're all going to be gone. My enemies are going to be gone. It's going to be great really loving your neighbour like yourself is it that's not really loving as God loves us is it Jonah's being really selfish here so he sat and he waited but you know Jonah was wrong when the evil king of Nineveh and all the evil people in Nineveh heard Jonah's message from God they believed him they believed him. They put on all their old clothes to show how sorry they were. They stopped eating to show how sorry they were. And instead, they all began to pray. Everyone in that big, big city full of thousands and thousands of people began to pray. The king even passed a law to everyone to stop doing bad things and to pray to God and ask him to forgive them. They were so serious they didn't even eat the whole time for days while they were praying. Is God going to hear? Is God going to forgive that evil, wicked city of Nineveh and that wicked, evil king? Of course he will. Because God's love's bigger than our sin. It always is. No matter how bad or not so bad our bad things are and our mistakes, God's love's bigger and greater than that. God doesn't love our sin. He hates our sin. But he loves you. And he loves me. Doesn't matter what country we come from. Doesn't matter what colour our skin is. Doesn't even matter what anyone else thinks about us. God loves you. And God loves me. That's why he sent Jesus into this world. That's how much we know he loves us. So that Jesus could pay the price for our sins to be taken away. By paying the price by dying in our place. So that we can be forgiven by trusting him. That is how much God loves us. So when the people in Nineveh prayed to God and they said sorry for their sin because God loved them and because he knew one day Jesus would die on a cross for their sins, God forgave them. And God saved them. And their city wasn't destroyed. Meanwhile, Jonah is sat outside and he's still counting the days. Day one, day two, day three, day four. Day five. Do you reckon he had a tr on the tree trunk there? Perhaps he was marking the days off. But it was so hot. Sat there in the desert outside Nineveh. The sun was penning down. It was so windy. He didn't realise that they'd all said sorry and asked God to forgive them. And that God had heard their prayer and God had forgiven them. And the city wasn't destroyed. Really, you'd think that'd be a happy ending, wouldn't you? You'd think Jonah would be pleased that God had forgiven them. You think Jonah would be pleased that they realised that God loved them? He'd be pleased to realise his journey had been a success. And everything God had asked him, he had done it. It would have been really good and it was a happy ending. No. As Jonah waited and he waited, he got more and more hot and more and more angry. So hot. So God, even though Jonah didn't deserve it, again, God did something to help Jonah. God, one day, 
And then one night, made a really big plant grow really, really fast every night. I bought a plant, and just imagine, a really big plant grew, and the big leaves spread out, and Jonah could sit there. And the next day, under the plant, it was lovely. He loved it. He could sit there in the shade under the plant, and shade it from the sun, and it was nice. When the sun got really hot, he could move around to the other side of the plant, he could sit there, and he, oh, this is lovely. I love it here. I've got a nice view of the city. I can sit back and wait and never be destroyed. And I can sit here in the shade and it's lush. And he leapt back against the plant roots. And he dozed off to sleep in the shade, thinking what a lovely place the world was. Till the next morning. The next morning when he woke up, something had happened. Because that night God had sent a little worm along. And the worm had come along and he'd nibbled through the roots at the bottom of the plant. And when the sun came up the next morning, the plant went... Shriveled up, wilted, into a dead brown mess on the floor. And Jonah had no shade at all. He sat there and it got hotter and hotter and hotter that day. And Jonah got more and more and more angry. In fact, so angry did Jonah get. He said, I wish I was dead. And God spoke to Jonah. He said, Jonah, are you right to be angry? Yes, I am. I love that plant. That plant was my best friend in the world. Oh, I love that plant. It kept me cool. I could sit in the shade. And you've gone and killed the plant I love. God spoke to Jonah again very patiently. Jonah, you loved a plant? It's just a plant. It grows. It dies. That's life. You loved a plant, but you hated all those people in Nineveh. In Nineveh was 120,000 children who'd never done anything wrong. They were so young, they couldn't even tell the difference between their left hand and their right hand. They couldn't even spell their name. They weren't even old enough to go to school. 120,000 of babies and children and toddlers. And you wanted me to destroy them, but save a plan. Jonah, people are worth far more than a plan. People are special. They've got hearts, they've got emotions, they've got feelings, they've got families. I love people more than anything else, Jonah. You wanted me to love and save a plant. I want you to realise there's people are more important than plants, Jonah. And God loves us, every one of us. And Jonah had to learn that lesson, didn't he? He had to realise and remember that no matter who we are, even if you're Jonah, even if you're destroyed, even if you're from Nineveh, even if you're and me today, we've all sinned. We've all done things wrong. We've made mistakes. And none of us deserve God to love us. And yet so great is God's love that he still loves us. That's why he gave his son. That's why Jesus came into this world. That's why he gave his life and died on the cross. So that you and I, no matter who we are, can be forgiven. Can be saved. You see, God searches and he knows everything about us in our hearts and our lives. He's loved you and me more than anything else in this whole wide world. That's why he says to you and me, if we realise how much he's loved us, we should trust him and we should say sorry and ask him to forgive our sins and to be our saviour. If we do that, then we should love him more than anything else because that's how much he loves you and me. And if we really love him, we want to love the people he loves. That means we need to love other people, even people we don't perhaps like, even people that are different to us. We should still show God's love to them. You and me, if we know God loves us, we shouldn't be a selfish person, should we? We should love God first. Then we should love other people, ourselves last. Very hard to do, but you can only really do that when you really know just how much God loves you. And just how special you are to him. Jonah had to learn a really, really important lesson, didn't he? So did the people in Nineveh. And we have to learn it too. That we need to say sorry to God for the wrong things we've done. And we need to trust him to be our friend and saviour. And if we do that because he loves us, he'll hear our prayers. He will forgive us. He will save us. And he'll be our friend forever. And if that's true, he says... Him to love me. Love me because I first loved you. And then love other people 
even though some of them don't deserve it sometimes, because that's how I love you. Our text once more says, love the Lord your God of all your heart and your neighbour as yourself. If you just pray. Dear Lord God, thank you. You love every one of us. It doesn't depend on whether we're good or bad, what colour our skin is, where we come from, where we live, how old we are, whether we're good looking or not so good looking. If we're clever and not so clever, Lord, you love us all exactly the same. None of us deserve your love. Help us to realise just how amazing your love is. Help us to say sorry to you for the wrong things we've done and ask you to be our friend and saviour. And then help us to do a really, really hard thing. To love other people. Because that is how you loved us. Amen. Now, make a little secret. Can you keep a secret for me? Two weeks cup time on Sunday, which will be Sunday the 14th of March, is Mother's Day. Normally, we'd make something at Wednesday Club. We'll keep it and we'll send it home the Wednesday before Mother's Day. Of course, we can't do that at the moment. So this week, we're going to make a present for Mum for Mother's Day. And next week, we're going to make a Mother's Day card. OK, the card and the present will be all there for collecting from Froom Valley Cleaners. And if you haven't got round to collecting it by Wednesday evening, I'll drop it off your house on my way home from work like last week, okay? So what we're going to make this week, and you can give it to Mum straight away, or you can hide it to Mother's Day. It's up to you, okay? We're going to make some of these fridge magnets in the shape of a heart. And so what we've got is like we did the Sand Art Holiday Club. These have got little sections on you peel off and it's sticky underneath it. And then there'll be these little sashes of sand there. Just cut the corner off with a pair of scissors. Okay, and then sprinkle the sand. Do this over a tray in the kitchen. Don't make a mess in the house for you. And also mum and dad won't be my friends anymore. Especially mum, it's Mother's Day. We don't want to make a mess and mum has to clear up too much, do we? Sprinkle the sand on there and it'll stick to the sticky bit. And then do a different colour for the next section and the next section. And you can make up your own hearts. And then once you've done that, there'll also be a bit of a fridge magnet in there. You can stick on the back of your heart. Section of that, stick on the back of there. And then you can give it to mum for Mother's Day. You can stick it to her fridge, can't she? To give all the other stuff you've made, she can stick on her fridge. There'll be two each. Two of these heart, two different designs each for everyone to do, okay? And a selection of sands for you to use. Please be careful and don't make too much of a mess because I want your mum to still like me because I don't want to be accused of making a horrible mess in your house. Have fun, enjoy yourself. Collect them, remember, or get mum to collect them or I'll drop them around, okay, this week. And then next week, I'll be a card to make for Mother's Day. So have a good week, enjoy yourself. See you next week. Bye-bye.